Luck be a lady tonight. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck if you've ever been a lady to begin with. Luck be a lady tonight. And when I sing that song in my show, I'm in heaven. I'm smoking. Oh, I'm smoking. <laughs> The first time I really saw tap dancers when my brother and I were five and three. And by this time, my parents saw Gregory and I were dancing around the house, just jumping around. And my mother, with the vision, said, well, maybe they're going to be dancers. Let's bring them to the Apollo Theater. We were amazed, I mean, to see that kind of dancing. And so we wanted to be that. And my uncle said, Maurice likes to dance. Take, they have free dance classes. Now, Gregory was only three. And he brought us down to this teacher, not Henry Letang. And, and the, the teacher said, oh, you want to dance? What can you do? So I said, well, I can turn around. Well, turn around for me. And I did seven pirouettes at five. He said, get this job in this class. He said, get this class quick, quick. He did seven pirouettes, he's only five. And, but they wouldn't take Gregory because he was, two, he was three and they felt that he would, he would be able to concentrate or focus, but of course he could. And I used to come home every day and teach him. And even, even to the day Gregory made his tra transition, he could look at a step and not even be taught it and do it. Just look and do it. I don't care how difficult it was, just do it. And he could do that at three. So they brought him in and one day the teacher turned around and Gregory was behind him doing the same stuff they were doing in the class. And that's how it began. That's, that's really the story of, of we were, God did that. He gifted us. He said every now and then he does that. He does it. Yeah, points at us. And then we got so good for that school, my father said, we've got to find a teacher for them. And they found Henry Latang, who's the great teacher of all the dancers. And we got there and we, and we were really good. In fact, I asked Henry, before he made his transition, I said, why did you focus on Gregory and I? With all those kids there who were good, he said, what happened was I was teaching a class and all of a sudden I realized that people had stopped, the other kids had stopped dancing and were looking at something. I said, why, why aren't they doing this choreography? He went back, they were all looking at me and Gregory. And he said, that's called charisma. And that's how it really all began. All I remember were tears, the floor. I would, I would be doing whatever he wanted us to do, whatever combination, and I couldn't get it. I never could get the things fast. Gregory got them like this. Took me a while, but Gregory would always forget them, and I remember them. That's how we helped each other. It's, uh, and I remember tears on the floor. It's funny you, you mentioned that, because I couldn't get it right away, but I never gave up. See, and that's why I was crying. And, and when I, the first time I cried, my mother got upset. Henry said, uh-uh. Don't stop him. Watch. You watch Maurice do the. He is not going to stop. You watch. And I never did. And when we were doing the Cotton Club movie, Henry Letang was a choreographer. And all of a sudden, Francis, out the blue, he said, they got to dance together. I know they, they have this, this thing where they have a fight in the middle of the movie, but I got, we, the audience got to see them dancing. He won this number right away. Right away. Go downstairs, Henry Letang. Get, I'm going to, I want to, uh, uh, tomorrow we're filming. So we get down, and Henry had us by our hands. I'm getting emotional about it now. That's emotional. Me on this side, Gregor on this side, and he taught us the number, and then the mirror, and it was like we were little kids again. And there's this step that he gave us. I couldn't get it, just, just like we were little kids. Gregory got it right away, and I couldn't get it. I went up on the side, and I, Gregory came over, helped me. I kept doing it, I kept doing it. And by the time we had to film the next thing, Gregory had forgotten it. <laughs> I know. Henry said, I can't believe it's deja vu. I'm back when you kids were five and seven. This is ridiculous. Gregory, you know, you know the step. He said, Maurice knows it. I'll get it. <laughs> it, was, it was great. It was great. Uh, I miss them all. I miss them all. I miss that, those times. That's great times. Oh. The moment that crystallized for me that this is what I wanted to do was when I saw Fayard Nicholas of the Nicholas Brothers. That was my idol. And I, I, I saw him on the stage, but then when I saw the movie Stormy Weather and what he, do, what he did with his hands, when he, he would move his hands, he, and, 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 and as he was tapping, and when his brother was tapping, he would do stuff like that as, at his brother. When I saw that, because I was into ballet already, I said, I have to do that. I have to be that. Gregory was just like Harold, 
just like, and I was just like Fayard. We never attained that greatness. They were not going to say, they were separate. They were just, that number in stormy weather when they split down the stairs, and I mean, who could do that? Henry brought us to meet Dinah Washington. She was the star. And she said, they tap? I said, put them on the amateur night. Put them on the amateur night. She said, but don't put them in competition because they're cute and they'll win for the cute. It wouldn't be fair to the other artists. So at the end of the, uh, the, the amateur night, we go on and we really could dance. And she said, oh my goodness. Put them on next week with Ruth Brown, who was a great star at the time. And that's how we got into the Apollo. And that's how it really all began. We worked the Apollo when we were seven and nine in 1955. I mean, and we did it almost every other week. We were cute. <laughs> we were cute. And we could dance. And then we met, started meeting all the great tap dancers. But we started meeting Chuck Green and, and um, Honey Coles and, uh, Coles and Atkins and all these guys. And then we met Teddy Hale. And then we met then. Then there was a great tap off in the basement of the Apollo. The, the basement of the Apollo was where they had all the rehearsals for the next show. But the floor was exactly like the floor on the stage, which was perfection for tap dancers. And there was a big tap off. And all these great tap dancers came from all over the country. And they drew, and they all tapped at each other. And then Baby Lawrence came in. And he drew a circle. And he tapped on this circle. And they all got around him. And he never he danced for 15 to 20 minutes straight and never repeated a step. Never. That's legendary. They'll, they'll never be that again. Bunny Briggs, when Gregory and I saw him, oh my God, because everything was so tight to the floor, we were fascinated by him, and he never broke a sweat. <laughs> and he had this, this big, I can see him, oh, I can see him in my face, right, in my eyes right now. It, he, he had the, the processed hair, a lot of makeup. He wore a lot of makeup. Lots, more than any man we'd ever seen on the stage. And he had this big bow tie that bounced and a big suit because he was a tiny little guy. Big suit. And he'd walk on and he'd do this step across the stage and they were so tight that we couldn't believe that he could make those sounds like that. So all those guys gave you something, but you always wanted to be an individual. You wanted, and, and they respected that. They didn't want you to copy them, but they said, let me give you a step. They would do that. Here's a step. And you do it. And then you put it, you put your thing on it. Don't try to be me, be you, you know? And that's what was the greatness of those guys. My father said one thing, he was so right. He said, when you're with those people, when you're with these giants, you got nothing to say. What do you got to say? You don't know nothing. You listen and learn. And we did. We really, we really did. And we got the spirituality and the emotion that they brought to the dance. It wasn't just steps. It's not just steps. Anybody could do steps. The dancers today have all this technique. Even in tap, a lot of technique. Can do anything you want. Anything you want. But in a, a, about a half hour into the dance, you're saying, I'm not feeling anything. How come I'm not feeling anything? That's the difference between them and a Bunny Briggs or a Teddy Hale or a Baby Lawrence or a Chuck Green. You never drifted off. You never did, because you looked at their face and they were having they were having the best time dancing for you. I'm dancing for you. Honey Coles used to say that. I'm dancing for them. I'm dancing for them. You know? The kids would say, look at me, is what they're saying. Look at what I can do, as opposed to this step is for you. Never lie to your audience. Never lie. Never do something you don't believe in. Every song, every move you make, you got to love. <laughs>